One minute. Let me tell you. If any of them is here, let me tell you if they were here, they will succeed. Put me anywhere. One, one minute. I went to school. I have been, I have been to the best of schools. I have been to the best of schools. I have been to Oxford. I have been to Cambridge. I have been to, I have been to all of them. And I tell you what. How many persons, how many, how many, have you ever seen anybody in this country who walked into the bank and was given money based on intellectual capital? They will tell you to bring your grandmother's house, your father's old house, your grand, by the time you finish it, that's it. Bill Gates was given, Bill Gates was given one million dollars. Go and read the history of Microsoft by a bank. For a young boy who was in a garage, Steve Jobs and his friend Wozniak was given two million dollars. Who would have given them that type of money here? Nobody. Let me tell you, Steve Jobs went and brought John Scully. John Scully was, was the CEO of Pepsi. Steve Jobs sent him a text and continued to send him a text. Do you want to continue selling sugar water or do you want to be part of changing the world? One day John Scully got up and said to Pepsi, where is President and CEO? I'm leaving this company. I want to go and join this small boy. It's in a garage. Which person will do it here? The his people will say that they don't do a medicine. No. <laughs> Nobody will do it. That's what we have. The government will not support you. You do anything here, the government will not patronize you. They will not patronize the white man. They will not do it. So there are so many things we take against. That is where a journalist has to say, let us take it back. Let nobody tell you there is not enough money. No. Tell me what a governor in Nigeria needs a dispatch rider for. What for? If I tell you how we stop fuel, we used to have a fuel dump when I was governor. Fuel dump. It was costing us almost 30 million a month. I said, what is it? They say, hey. I said, shut it down. <laughs> I found out that my convoy in the first two weeks, because it was about 22 vehicles, was costing us about 300, about 300,000 to buy fuel. Of course, they, you know what happens to half of it. So I said, okay, you know what we are going to do? Bring down the convoy. People in Anambra here, yeah, yeah. I don't use that. I asked them, carry this thing and go. Pack it. My convoy is five vehicles. And you cannot buy fuel unless I'm inside the car. So I will pay them. No more. that are here. It is your future that they are toying with. I have children. I have kids. I have two lovely children that are graduates. Somebody told me yesterday, just yesterday, he said to me, my friend said that we were going somewhere and I was telling him about the text my daughter sent to me. I wish I read that type of text to you and you will understand. And somebody said to me, oh I saw your son going to, that one was in Vietnam. He was going to run somewhere. He said he's going for interview for job. Peter, can't you give him a job? Peter, can't you do this? The boy doesn't even have. I said none of my children have car. I was the only person who is governor and bank chairman. Not to them. Nobody elected them. One. They have to look for job. They have to do what they need to do. Take back your country. This country belongs to you. It is your future that they are toying with. You must take it back from them. It is not their country. And you must take it back from them. And how will you take it back from them? How will you take it back from them? When they invite you, go to your local government, the ex local government chairman, who receives 100 million naira every month. What does he do with it? 
He will tell you no problem. Yes, he's buying new Jeep. This is somebody who has never seen car in his life. He now uses Jeep. His wife has become first lady of the local government. You go everywhere, a convoy will pass you. They say it's first lady of the, of the state. First what? This man, this woman is like they used to tell me then, hey, Peter, you're not treating your wife fairly. Peter, you're not doing this. That this is this. I said, no. There's so many costs. If I tell you literally, if I have time and tell you cost of governance here, you won't be here. When I came back, when I started, we had about 10 go governor's guest house. I said, what is governor going to do with this? I go to work in the morning. I go back in the evening. I come back. My cook then will cook about food that about 50 people eat. I said, what is this for? They were killing one cow every day. I said, what is this for? He said, oh, oh, your excellency, I'm doing it in case if you come back with people. I said, have you ever seen me come back here with anybody? So why are you cooking for the people? Any day people will come here, I will let you know. Cook for only one person. One person. Me. I said, don't do it. You know, I come from Anambra State. There's too many big men. Of course. Like I tell them, I said, don't allow any of them to come here. I don't have what it takes to entertain them. So what they do, they phone me, Peter, I want to see you. I come to your house in the evening. So I go to his house. Because there he will bring, there he will bring his champagne, eat his uh, fabulous food. And at that zone I'm going, they will give me something to take back. Goodbye. But don't go to government house. Because government house is not a restaurant. It's not a place to drink champagne. A bottle of champagne. A bottle of champagne. A bottle of champagne today costs about 400,000. 500,000. That is salary of 20 people at 20, 20,000. And you drink it with the public money. No. You can't do that. It should be, if you want to do that, you go to your house. So I said to them, no, this is government money. We brought down the cost of feeding governor. If I tell you where I brought it down from, to this way, I say, this will be enough. Don't worry about me. And I can go on and on. You can go and work with people. It's not anything. It's not any magic. I fly every flight I've taken in Nigeria as a governor was the economy. Reason is simple. If I come and say business class, 54,000. Other one, you go to the internet, is 19,000. Is it not just for my budget to be for 40 minutes? Why would I pay additional thousand? I said no. I went to Young Shagura and said, your hotel in Abuja, can you give me this guy? He gave me 50%. So to sleep there is 30,000 naira. And I said, no, these things, that is what people want me to go to another bigger hotel and stay for 250,000 naira. And people say, oh, Peter, is it? I said, well, I have a problem. If I sleep there and pay somebody 250, I will be awake. I wouldn't go to sleep. Because I think they're selling my money. Because I would think they have stolen my money. So it is important that you understand our government, we need to shut down cost of governance. No state government needs a house in Abuja. The government doesn't live in Abuja. They don't need all this. Nobody wants to kill you. I was governor for eight years without bulletproof car. I must tell you that I bought one. But I didn't use it, and nobody killed me. I was using Prado. They would say, hey, it's not a uh, balance, it's not this. I don't think they keep telling me that government vehicles, because of high traffic, is every six months. I say, wait, if you remove this car from here, because you know what they do? They take it into auction and say, I say, no, this car is here for the time. We will use it. It's functional. What do people think you're doing to yourself? We must shut down. And people say, where did you get money to say? Where did you get money? We got those monies. We were owing gratuities and pension of people for 35 billion. We were able to pay it. Because we have to shut down everything. I said, this cannot happen. Nobody will ever tell you that you came to a party while I was governor. 
for eight years. It's not a bar, it's not a nightclub. No, it's governor's lodge. When I finish, I go home. If anybody wants to dance, he goes to the nightclub. That is his business. And I, I take this. So all I'm trying to say is that we can change no visitor we put in a hotel if you have any value to offer. And go and check. We are number one in implementation of MDG. We got our word for it. I spoke at the UN. Go to European Union. We are number one in European Union while I was there. Why am I saying this? We were able to meet up every obligation. So my dear people, yes, it's good to stay here and feel bad and do everything. But let me beg you. You have no other country except this one. And only you can do this. If anybody is telling you, those people out there, they don't know you. They don't care about you. If they care, they will do things differently. You will see it in their behavior. You will see it in the way they do things, the way they feel, the way they move, and everything. And that, because they are doing that, what I beg you is that you must, like Olisa pleaded, get up and decide to join politics. Get up and decide to be part of it. The man who is doing the revolution in Hong Kong is 17 years old. He's 17 years old. My dear people, the society we have them to abuse today will take his revenge on all of us tomorrow. Thank you and God bless you. <laughs>